Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. Today, we are lucky enough to be talking with Dr. Shri Noel, who does lifestyle and wellness coaching postpartum to help mamas get back to their healthy selves. She talks today about her top six tips on what you can work on postpartum to get back to your pre-pregnancy um, weight or a place that you feel comfortable with postpartum. Uh, we will get to that right after this quick reminder. Today's episode is sponsored by the Pregnancy Posse. This is a group, a supportive membership site for pregnant and postpartum women who need a little bit of extra support in that time. We have monthly talks by local experts around all kinds of topics such as diet, exercise, breastfeeding, sleep consultants. We have counselors who come on and discuss around um, how to parent and create that shift in your relationship after becoming a parent. Uh, you can check it out on our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca. Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast, where our goal is to support you in the journey from pregnancy through to parenthood. We are so passionate about this time in a woman's life, and we want to make sure you have fun and reliable information you can trust. She Found Motherhood podcast is meant for general medical information only. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This does not apply to every situation. If you have questions or if you have received different advice, please contact your healthcare provider. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Hello, everybody. Today we have Dr. Shri Noel with us who works out of Vienna, Virginia, and she focuses on wellness in the postpartum period. Uh, Shri, welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. Why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks so much for having me on. So um, yes, I am a board certified internal medicine physician, and I recently founded a coaching business called Step-by-Step -Step Wellness and Weight Loss. And I um, was in clinical practice for about five years. And I recently made this transition on um, to starting my own uh, business. And I really... Um, loved spending time with my patients, um, engaging them and discussing um, lifestyle modifications and just really how we can get healthy using um, diet and exercise and things of that sort. And so that's what I do a lot with my coaching clients. I was sometimes in practice frustrated by the fact that I didn't have a lot of time to spend with my patients um, talking about these things. And so now I um, have the privilege of just kind of being able to spend time with um, my clients and really talking about these important um, issues. Yeah, that is so great. Um, and you are a mother of two, I understand a four year old and a seven year old. Hey, I am. Yes. So we here on the She Found Motherhood podcast love to hear birth stories. So I don't know if you feel comfortable telling us a little bit about kind of your two deliveries and how they went. Um, and then we also love hearing what's your, your fondest memory of that postpartum period and what was the biggest challenge for you? So absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I'd be happy to share. So I'll first, I'll start off with my oldest. Um, his name is Micah and he's seven years old. Um, had a, you know, great pregnancy. And I um, recall that my water broke at home and um, didn't have any contractions right away. Um, and so, you know, called the OB um, and she suggested that we go in. I was induced with him and um, did have an epidural um, to, you know, help with what I anticipated would be um, an interesting or painful delivery. Um, I pushed for two and a half hours with this little guy. <laughs> wow. That's Yes. And so I remember my husband, he, um, you know, asked, um, you know, the doctor, like, how long are we going to be pushing for? And she said, until we have a baby. So I think she was just, you know, she had done a couple C-sections that day and she was just really determined not to uh, take me to um, the OR for a C-section. Um, and so we did, we pushed until we had a baby. And so two and a half hours later, 
uh, he was born. So um, that was, um, it was a long time, <laughs> I, I do recall, um, but of course, incredibly worth it. Um, in the postpartum period um, with him, so I should I should mention that he was two and a half weeks early, um, and he um, I think because he was a little bit early had some difficulty latching, and so um, he I did breastfeed him, but we had some difficulties in the postpartum period just getting him to latch. I used a nibble shield for a little while, for almost about a month actually, um, just to you know, until he was able to sort of get his pattern down. And so we were able to, you know, he was able to finally sort of get the hang of things and then, um, you know, things got uh, better from there. But I would say that that was probably one of the biggest challenges was I was really enthusiastic about breastfeeding. And I know, I knew some friends that it came really easily for. Um, and so, you know, it didn't come as easily to Micah and I. And so, but I was really determined to, to do my best to, to breastfeed him. And so um, it was challenging, but, you know, I just kind of stuck in there with everything. And, you know, we were able to, um, to uh, you know, breastfeed without any issues after about a month or so. Um, and I think the, the most like joyous or, you know, most memorable thing that I remember is just really hearing him cry for the first time. Um, it would, had been such an exhausting day. Um, like I said, two and a half hours of pushing and just to see that um, beautiful boy um, was just, yeah, I just, you know, cried tears of joy. So that was, um, that was just the best thing. Awesome. And what about your daughter? Yeah, so my daughter, um, she was born about a week early. So she was born at 39 weeks and my water broke at home again with her, but it was interesting. Um, so with my son, it was just kind of very obvious that my water had, <laughs> had broke. Um, but with my daughter, I wasn't exactly sure. I kind of turned around in bed and thought, hmm, you know, did my water break? Um, Cause it was just, just a little bit. Um, and so I'll, I just kind of laid there for a little while then nudged my husband and said, I think, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, something may be going on. So um, again, didn't progress um, on my own with her either. Um, didn't, wasn't having any contractions at home. So we eventually went to the hospital. I was induced with her as well. Um, and I had an epidural with her as well. And one of the interesting thing is when, with my son, I had asked for um, like the attending physician to do my epidural. Um, this time around, I was like, no, you know, I'll be relaxed. <laughs> I'll let the, you know, the resident give it a try. Um, and I don't think this is necessarily why, um, you know, what I'm gonna describe happened, but it was just interesting that, um, that I was just like, no, I'll, it's fine, you know, whoever can do it. But it, um, I could only feel my epidural, the first one I had on one side. And so, mm. you know, they tried to adjust it a little bit. That wasn't working so well. Um, and then they said, I think the best way to get you comfortable is just to pull it out and try it over again. Um, and so when they did, you know, finally they did. Um, and then, um, but before it was actually working and was effective, um, it was time to push and uh, two pushes and my daughter was out. So, you know, I've heard um, before I started having children that the first one kind of paves the way. Um, and so I was very grateful that there wasn't a whole lot of pushing involved with her. The whole process was much, much shorter. Um, but um, she kind of gave us a little bit of a scare when she was first born. Um, she, I think they thought that maybe she just came down the birth canal a little fast and may have um, like aspirated a little bit of the amniotic fluid. And um, so she was having some trouble um, when she first um, was born, but they were able to get her going right away. Um, and so that was a little frightening. I was like, what's kind of going on with my baby? And they're 
you know, you kind of hear whispers with the nurses um, about how she was doing, but um, she kind of perked up and um, by the five minute mark, she was doing just fine. Um, but I always say that she's, you know, just kind of scared mommy half to death, like right when she was born. Um, but um, so that was um, difficult. That was kind of scary. But um, after that, she's been completely fine. Um, breastfed her as well. And, um, but for her, she had a lot, she was latching very shallowly and that was ultra painful. <laughs> it's like, it was like time for her to eat, like, you know, every like three hours or so. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. is it time already? Like, I just didn't want to I don't, I don't want to say you want to feed her, but <laughs> you didn't want the pain in the nipples. That's right. I didn't want the pain. That's, That's right. okay. Yes. <laughs> Nobody wants the pain in the nipples if they can avoid it. That's right. Um, so we got through that. Um, and then eventually, obviously, you know, we were able to um, breastfeed a little bit um, more comfortably for both of us. Um, and so um so that was, I think, the toughest thing in the postpartum period was just kind of, again, the, the struggles with breastfeeding and it didn't sort of come very easily for her. Um, and then I think the most like joyous time was seeing my son with her. Um, that was just like incredible just seeing him interact with her, just kind of smiling down on her and just um, just kind of that instant bond that they seem to have. So that was really, really something special. That's so sweet seeing the older sibling and the younger sibling together. I still get a kick out of it. My kids are like six and eight now when they're like playing nicely together. Um, yes. Awesome. And so part of what inspired you to do this new business, this new adventure was kind of spending time, more time with your kids, hey, and kind of helping other postpartum folks on their journeys, because um, you'd made that postpartum journey twice yourself. Is that right? That's right. So when I had my son, I was in third year, my third year in residency. Um, and then when I had my daughter, I was in my clinical practice. Um, so when I had my son and was in residency, I was off for about like, six or seven weeks with him. Um, and then about, um, I took three months off with my daughter and I just didn't feel like that was quite long enough. And, um, it definitely kind of changed my focus or changed my, um, like the way I wanted to spend my time, the way I wanted to kind of show up. I definitely, um, you know, was very still focused on my work and, you know, taking care of my patients. But, you know, there was, um, you know, that desire and that longing to be at home and to um, spend more time with my children. Um, and so that's why um, one of the wonderful things about this new opportunity is that I'm able to have a flexible schedule. I'm able to, you know, sort of be here with the, with the kids a little bit more, which has been wonderful. Um, especially during this, this time. Yeah, especially during this time. Um, thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. I, I, I love hearing people's stories and how it's kind of changed their just reevaluating life and priorities and that, that it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. Even those of us who've gone through a decade plus of education, it's okay to readjust those priorities and that's normal. And whatever season of life you're in, you can readjust again. So once the kids are grown up and they're off having grandbabies, then you can do more of whatever, right? Like, mm -hmm. and that's okay. And I think we need to give ourselves permission and that kind of self-love, which we're going to talk a little bit about soon to do that. Um, so you have Absolutely. six tips for us for kind of postpartum wellness, getting back into your healthy feeling, because really, a lot of the times postpartum, um, we struggle with kind of body image stuff and not having the time we normally would to kind of really feel fit and strong and healthy. And life is kind of, it's all new. And there's so much new learning, it's really hard to kind of maintain those really good healthy habits that perhaps we had before we were pregnant. Um, so we'll kind of go through those if you're okay with that. And I'll just mention each tip and you can expand on them. So, um, Absolutely. number one, B 
be gentle with yourself. Yes. So this one is one of one of the favorite ones of mine. And I think it's because um, oftentimes we do tend to be hard on ourselves. We, you know, want have a desire to get back into that, you know, to our pre-pregnancy weight, our pre-pregnancy body right away. We want um, that to sort of happen overnight in some cases. And being gentle with ourselves, I take that to mean just, you know, realize the fact that your body has done something amazing. It has been, um, you know, um, nurturing and growing a human being. You delivered a human being. Just remember that when you're like, oh, you know, you see the extra pounds and things like that. Just remember how amazing um, you are and how amazing your body has supported you and supported this baby um, through um, this process. And so just remembering that and um, just being gentle with yourself, not expecting results um, right away um, and just giving yourself yourself some grace to say, yep, I, um, you know, nurtured this baby for, you know, nine months and, um, you know, I can take my time in getting back to my pre-pregnancy shape. It's interesting. I, well, I think also I harp on this a lot on this podcast, but we, I don't think we appreciate the fourth trimester as much as we should, Mm -hmm. that it's a big transition time. Our bodies are going through transitions. We're learning all these new skills. Our babies are going through transitions. And during that time, it's, it's, you know, to add more pressure onto yourself, it's just can get overwhelming. So I think that's a really great piece. Be gentle with yourself. Um, Your second tip is adjust expectations. Yes. So your body may look different after um, you've had a baby. It, for some people, they go back to, you know, their pre-pregnancy body without much trouble. But for, I would say a lot of us, and maybe the majority of us, our bodies have changed and it may not be the pre-pregnancy body that, um, that we're hoping for. So just realizing that, um, again, your body's done something amazing. It may not look the same as it did before and being okay with that. And, you know, just kind of adjusting to a new normal in a way. Yeah. And I, I like to think of it as, when you're working on yourself after having kids or anytime really, but I think definitely after having kids, it's, you know, set your, have different goals, right? So I want to be fit and strong so that I can do the things that I want to do long-term rather than I want to be a size four or size six or size eight or whatever, and fit into those specific types of genes, right? You need to kind of give yourself better goals, different goals. I don't know how to say that, but I think that's, that's part of that adjusting expectations, right? Exactly. And I feel like when we're more accepting of, you know, the fact that, um, you know, our bodies may be different after having a baby, I think it actually makes it easier to achieve our either weight loss or wellness goals, because we're not resisting um, our bodies so much. We're coming from a place of self love, and it's easier to make changes um, when we're being more accepting of ourselves. Awesome. Uh, So the third tip is avoid comparisons to others. And this is huge, especially in the world of social media these days. Hey, yes, 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 yes. So I remember even when I was pregnant um, with my son, I would be like, or pregnant or like just, you know, in that postpartum period, well, how long did it take you to get back to your pre-pregnancy weight? Um, Just so I could gauge like what would be appropriate for me. And um, I quickly learned that my journey didn't look like a lot of my friends' journeys. And um, I had to learn to be okay with that. And so I think, you know, your journey may look different than your friends or other family members that you have. And just really not comparing yourself to that. Just your journey is your journey. And again, um, when you're not comparing your journey to others, um, you can really, again, come from that place of self-love. You're not um, running the risk of doing more emotional eating 
more emotional eating because you're maybe depressed that, um, you know, your friend here lost her weight in three months, but you're here six months out and you're not quite um, back to your pre-pregnancy weight. So um, just that level of acceptance um, can um, go a long way and prevent some other issues like um, emotional eating that can sometimes make it more difficult to lose the weight. That's a really interesting perspective. I hadn't thought of that before, but Mm -hmm. yeah, that feeling bad about yourself, that your journey is not going as you anticipated or as your friends did will actually hinder your progress even more. That's right. Uh, All right. So the tip number four is focus on making healthy choices for you and your newborn. Yes. So focusing on making healthy decisions for you and your newborn versus weight focused goals or decisions. So, um, you know, say I want to, instead of thinking about a certain um, number on the scale that you're hoping to reach, you know, think about healthy meals that, or healthy foods that you want to put into your body. Um, think about like, uh, like you've mentioned, um, I want to be strong and be able to, you know, maybe do certain things, or I want to run a 5k or whatever your goals might be from a fitness perspective, from a food perspective. Um, but setting goals that don't have to do with the scale can be super helpful. Um, and if you're making these healthy choices, the weight will come off naturally without, um, you know, you having to really think about it in some cases, we want to think about these changes as lifestyle changes and not quick fixes. Sometimes when we're focused on the quick fixes, we're, it's only, you know, we're driven by the scale and only the scale. But sometimes I like to just not focus so much on the scale so much, but just think about, okay, what are the healthy choices I want to make for myself and my newborn? You know, maybe it's getting more active or going for walks with my newborn um, and things like that. But just really focusing on the lifestyle changes, um, the healthier choices that you can make, and then the weight will follow. And that segues nicely into number five, which is focus on your non-scale victories. Yes. So this is another uh, one of my favorites and something that I talk um, with my clients quite a bit. Um, particularly when um, you are having maybe difficulty getting started, you need help getting motivated or staying motivated, Um, particularly maybe like when you aren't seeing changes on the scale just yet. Um, But taking taking, um, or focusing on the uh, non-scale victories is so important when you're trying to lose weight. It for, uh, forces the brain to focus on the positive things that are going on. So again, it's kind of removing that idea that we're only focused on what the scale is saying, and we're focusing on our non-scale victories. So that can be like, I got all my water in today. I, um, you know, um, you know, ate a healthy lunch today. I took a walk around the block today. So those are things that kind of empower us to keep going on our journeys, even if the scale, you know, maybe isn't reflecting uh, what we're doing. And that just kind of gives you the um, motivation to keep going a lot of the times. Um, I try to make that a practice for myself as well. Just at the end end of the day, just kind of jotting down, jotting down non-scale victories or what went well during the course of the day. Our brain naturally um, focuses on the negative side of things a lot of the time. And when you um, force your brain to think of these non-scale victories, we're uh, forcing our brain to focus on uh, the positives and that can be super motivating. Yeah. And there's great evidence around managing kind of depression, anxiety with that kind of positivity, gratitude journaling as well. Again, a great segue into number six, (laughs) the importance of self-care. Now, anybody who listens to this podcast know that we are huge about this. We did a whole podcast on uh, nests, which is one of the ways of helping to reduce the risk of postpartum depression, anxiety. Um, But why don't you give us a couple of tips that you like to tell your uh, clients? 
Yes. So I think that the importance of self-care cannot be emphasized enough. Um, I think you're right. I think it's something that we don't necessarily do very well either. Um, We just tend to take care of everybody else before we take care of ourselves. And I always, you know, talk to my clients and tell them that if we don't take good care of ourselves, it's that much more difficult to take care of um, the people around us. So it's harder to take care of our newborn. It's harder to, um, you know, interact or engage with our older children or or our spouses. So um, taking care of ourselves, self-care is not selfish. Um, It is um, when we take a few minutes to, um, you know, to participate in self-care, we show up better for ourselves. We show up better for our newborns and all of the people around us. So that's why I think it's so, so, so critical that we take a few minutes to do that. And I think that self-care and, um, One of the things I talk to with my clients is that self-care does not have to be complicated. So when a lot of people think about self-care, they think about, you know, manicures or pedicures or going to the spa for the day. It does not have to, and and that could be self-care, but it doesn't have to be, um, you know, that elaborate. I like to just set a timer sometimes for five or 10 minutes to like read a book, go up to your room and just close your eyes for a bit. Um, read a book or call a friend, um, you know, something like that. Even getting fresh flowers for your home can be self-care, just kind of lift your spirits up a little bit. And I always recommend planning your self-care because if if you don't plan it, sometimes it doesn't get done. So um, just, you know, maybe setting a timer on your phone, just say, okay, this is my me time. I will be back and I'm going to go you know, sometimes I just say, make a list of the things that you consider self-care because my list may look a little bit different than yours. And if, you know, if you're having trouble in that moment, figuring out what type of self-care activity you'd like to engage in, just take a look at the list. Okay, I'm going to do that right now and just take a few moments for yourself and you'll feel, you know, recharged, you'll feel more energized. And again, you'll show up better um, for yourself and for folks around you. So when I say, uh, showing up better for yourself, more you're more likely to make those healthier choices because you've taken the time to um, take care of yourself. And so you're making healthier choices and, you know, that all, you know, kind of a snowball effect, right? In a positive way where you're making healthier choices, you're able to, um, you know, get back to your pre-pregnancy um, weight and things like that so much faster if you're able to take that little bit of time. It goes a long way. And I think it's really important to emphasize, and you've touched on this, that it doesn't have to be a ton of time. We're talking Mm -hmm. five to 10 minutes when your babies are little, little, little. And as they grow up and become more independent, then it can take a little bit more time. And that's fine. But really, we're talking kind of five to 10 minutes just to kind of do something that makes you feel like you is your own personal self-care, whatever that looks like, not a ton of time. And so I think it's very much doable for everybody. I think the biggest challenge that, and I'm totally overgeneralizing here, but I think the biggest challenge that new moms specifically um, is they see all of this stuff around the house that needs to be done. And so Mm -hmm. rather than taking that five minutes to care for themselves, they do five minutes of folding the laundry or put the dishes away or X, Y, and Z, all the stuff that just piles up over time. And it's okay to just leave it. It's more important that you care for yourself so you can be a better human and a better parent and a better spouse and a better daughter and a better mother than it is for that laundry to get folded. Right. And that's so true. And we need to give ourselves permission to do that. So absolutely. Um, What are some common pain points? What are some common kind of big issues that it are pretty common for kind of women postpartum, you kind of chatted one around the emotional eating and getting stuck into that kind of comparing yourself with others and feeling like you're not doing it how you should be doing it. And so then you start doing some emotional eating, and then it just kind of sets you backwards. Are there any kind of other common things that um, women struggle with? And I'm using a term women, but people struggle with kind of postpartum that you've kind of come across and can help manage? Absolutely. So yeah, emotional eating, as you mentioned, um, is a very huge one. Um, Nighttime snacking is another one. Um, Obviously, you know, you have a newborn, so you're up at, you know, various times during the night. Um, And so nighttime snacking is a big one that I uh, work with my clients on um, as well. 
um, staying and getting motivated or staying consistent with your healthy choices. Um, again, that those non-scale victories are one way that we touched on that could help with that. Um, incorporating self-care as we touched on as well, and really kind of digging into how and why that ties into your weight loss um, so much. Um, and then planning um, is another one, how important planning can be. Um, when we plan ahead, we're using that part of our brain that really cares about our goals and our aspirations versus um, that kind of like in the moment um, type of decision-making where, you know, you're using that part of your brain that's really just caring about that moment and giving you some pleasure or comfort in that, in that time. So, um, so that's something that I work on quite a bit too, is just kind of how pre-planning kind of is a very magical thing in terms of kind of meeting some of your weight loss and uh, wellness goals as well. That's great. And I think those are common issues, regardless mm -hmm. of whether you're postpartum or not. That's true. Um, how can people, obviously many of our listeners are not in your local area. Um, how can people kind of get a hold of you or can they get you on Instagram or do you have a website and how would it be possible to kind of provide services for people who aren't in your ex like exact local area? Absolutely. So yes. So um, my IG and my Facebook handles are at, at SBS wellness. And um, my website is sbswellness.com. Great. And, and we'll put those on the show notes. Awesome. And I um, offer uh, free consultations for women who would like to just chat and just kind of strategize and see whether we would be good, a good match to work with one another. Um, and so that's available. That scheduling um, is available on my website. If someone um, would be interested in kind of chatting to see if I could potentially help them out um, as well. Awesome. That's great. Yes. Well, Dr. Shri, thank you so much for coming on with us. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, thank you so much for caring for our postpartum mamas. Um, it's uh, what you're doing is amazing. So thank you very much. Absolutely. You're so welcome. Such a pleasure. If you enjoyed listening, please head over to iTunes, subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes, and please leave us a review. If you found this helpful, Take a screenshot and share on social to help other mamas access this information. Check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca and join our community. We send out weekly emails and release new content focused on this incredible time in your lives. We'll also be sharing exclusive offers, so be sure not to miss out.